Bueno. Bueno. Uh, I'm not going to introduce myself because if you know me, you better ask somebody. He's Dominic! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, I'm going to discuss the quantum Hall effect, but first I'm going to derive gauge invariance for electromagnetism. Uh, we'll start by taking the Schrodinger equation for a free wave packet. So. We know that if we're looking at some particle in space phi, that we should be able to find the probability of it being in that state by using the absolute square of the inner product. So given this equation, we should be able to put a phase on, on the state psi. So we should be able to take psi, or phi, right? Translated by the exponential with the function p of x and t. That's an arbitrary smooth function of time and space. Uh, and like if you tell, if you plug this into the inner product, it, should, it shouldn't do anything. It's a unitary uh, transformation. So we come across an issue though when we actually try and plug it in our Schrodinger equation. So let's plug it in. We'll start with the left hand side. And I'll call five prime the one that's transformed. And then this equals So then if you're doing the product rule, I'm skipping a couple steps just you know, just because algebra sucks. <laughs> on the left hand side. Now the right hand side will do the same thing. Since there's two derivatives on the right hand side, it actually becomes even nastier, so I'll skip even more steps. squared over 2m times del plus i del of our smooth function p squared times psi. So then putting them back together, we end up getting something very different from the Schrodinger equation we started with. It's actually not even the Schrodinger equation anymore, and that's the point. that doesn't preserve the physics of preserving the inner product and doesn't give us accurate probabilities. So instead of using this, 